Every single day, the world burns through nearly 27 million barrels of petrol, and that number's still climbing. That's billions of liters moving through cars, trucks, and machines around the globe, all thanks to a process most people never think about. So where does it all come from? How do factories turn thick, raw crude oil into clean, high-performance petrol that powers the modern world? Well, let's break it down here at the process world. The story of petrol started long before modern cars hit the road. Back in the 1800s, crude oil was mostly used to make kerosene for lamps. Petrol was just a leftover byproduct. Nobody saw much use for it at first. That changed quickly when engines started evolving. Once the internal combustion engine came into play, petrol found its purpose. Back in the early 1900s, things took off fast. Companies like Ford were mass-producing cars, and suddenly petrol became one of the most important fuels on the planet. Demand exploded, and that meant refineries had to level up their game. New processes were invented to get more petrol out of every barrel of oil. Cracking, reforming, and blending, these weren't just technical terms. These were breakthroughs that shaped the fuel industry. Over time, petrol transformed from a throwaway liquid to the backbone of global transport. Every drop of it goes through a well-planned system, optimized by decades of scientific progress. Knowing where it started helps us appreciate how much work goes into every tank we fill. So up next, let's break down what crude oil really is and why it's so valuable. Crude oil is the raw ingredient behind petrol, and it's nothing fancy at first glance. It's a thick, dark liquid found deep underground, made from ancient plants and animals that decayed over millions of years. What makes crude oil so valuable is the mix of hydrocarbons inside it, basically chains of hydrogen and carbon atoms. These chains are the building blocks of fuels like petrol, diesel, and jet fuel. There's no single version of crude oil. Some types are light and flow easily, while others are heavy and thick. Some have more sulfur and impurities, which makes them harder to process. Refineries have to be designed carefully to handle specific types of crude, depending on what's available in the region. What's really interesting is that crude oil by itself isn't useful. It has to be broken down and refined before it can power anything. That's where the science kicks in. Knowing the chemistry inside crude is what helps engineers decide how to process it, what techniques to use, and how to get the best quality petrol out of every barrel. Now that we know what crude oil really is, it's time to see how refineries prepare it for the long transformation ahead. But before we get into that, please leave a like and subscribe for more amazing videos like this one. Now moving on. Before anything useful can come out of crude oil, it needs a proper cleanup. This early stage happens right after the oil reaches the refinery, and it's all about preparation. As mentioned, raw crude carries more than just oil. It often contains water, salts, sand, and other impurities that can damage expensive equipment down the line. So the first thing refineries do is remove that junk. They start with a process called desalting. In simple terms, water is mixed into the crude oil to dissolve the salts. Then everything is run through an electric field that helps separate the water from the oil. This step is small in time, but big in importance. It protects the machinery and keeps the refining process smooth. After desalting, the crude is sent through a preheater. These are heat exchangers that warm the oil up to just the right temperature so it's ready to flow into the main distillation unit. Without this heat up phase, the oil wouldn't separate correctly in the next step. It might not seem flashy, but this part of the process sets up the foundation for everything that follows. The cleaner and more prepared the crude is, the better the results. Next, we get into the heart of it all, the distillation tower. Once the crude oil is cleaned and heated, it moves into the distillation tower, the core of the refinery. This is where things finally start to separate. Inside this tall column, the oil mixture rises through different levels, each set at a specific temperature. As the oil vapor travels up, the lighter parts of it begin to condense at different heights. At the very top, you get gases like propane and butane. A little further down, you get naphtha, which is one of the early building blocks for petrol. 
Next comes kerosene, diesel, and finally near the bottom, the heavy stuff like fuel oil and butamine. Each of these layers is pulled out through separate outlets, and that's how the refinery begins sorting out the raw crude into useful materials. Petrol doesn't come out fully ready at this point. What you get is a light fraction that still needs refining to meet performance and environmental standards. But this stage is where that journey officially begins. The distillation column turns one messy liquid into organized layers, each with its own purpose. Now that we've split the crude, it's time to upgrade those parts into high-performance fuel. Let's move on to the conversion phase. This is where science gets serious. One of the biggest tools in this phase is a method called catalytic cracking. In simple terms, it uses heat, pressure, and a special catalyst to break heavy hydrocarbons into lighter ones. And the star result here? Petrol. Then there's hydrocracking, which is like catalytic cracking's high-tech cousin. This one uses hydrogen along with pressure and a catalyst to produce cleaner, more efficient fuel. It helps make sure that what comes out meets modern standards for both performance and emissions. Another process called reforming focuses on boosting petrol's octane rating. That's what gives fuel more power without causing engine knock. And to fine tune things further, there's alkylation. This one takes leftover gases from cracking and combines them into more high octane petrol components. All these steps are happening in real time with careful controls to make sure nothing is wasted and everything meets strict quality standards. Once that's done, we're left with refined petrol but before it even reaches a car, there's still more work to do. This stage is all about quality, making sure the petrol isn't just powerful, but also clean, safe, and ready to meet environmental rules. First up is hydro treating. This step removes leftover sulfur, nitrogen, and any other unwanted elements that can cause engine problems or lead to high emissions. It's done using hydrogen and a catalyst under just the right temperature and pressure. What comes out is a cleaner fuel that burns better and keeps engines running smoothly. Once the impurities are taken out, blending begins. Petrol doesn't just come from one stream. It's a mix of different components. Each has specific qualities, like how easily it evaporates or how much energy it releases. Refineries blend them into precise ratios to hit the right standards for different regions and seasons. In colder weather, for example, petrol needs to vaporize faster, so lighter components are added to the mix. This is also where additives are introduced. These include things like detergents that keep engines clean and stabilizers that help the fuel last longer in storage. By the end of this process, the petrol is fully ready, and up next is how it's packaged and stored. Now, first, it needs to be stored safely. At the refinery, the fuel is transferred into large storage tanks, some holding millions of liters at once. These tanks are carefully built with strong steel and lined with coatings that prevent corrosion. Every one of them is monitored around the clock to avoid leaks or contamination. The environment inside these tanks is tightly controlled. Vapors are managed using floating roofs or vapor recovery systems that reduce emissions and fire risk. Even the smallest mistake can cause serious problems, so safety is always top priority. Before leaving the refinery, the petrol moves through one last round of testing. Lab teams check its quality, making sure that it meets all required fuel standards. If it passes, it's ready to move out. From this point, the petrol is still in bulk form. It's not packed into small bottles or containers. Instead, it's handled in thousands of liters at a time, prepped for transport to terminals and fuel stations. Once petrol is refined, tested and stored, it begins a tightly controlled journey to reach your local fuel station. Most of it travels through massive underground pipelines that stretch across entire regions, while the rest is moved by specialized tanker trucks, rail cars, or ships designed to handle flammable liquids safely. At each stop, from refinery tanks to regional terminals, the fuel is checked, measured, and kept stable to prevent contamination or loss. Once it arrives at a petrol station, it's stored in underground tanks and finally pumped into your vehicle. So now that you know every step from deep underground to your fuel tank, do you think petrol will feel like just gas? 
Or does it feel like liquid engineering at its finest? Let us know what surprised you the most. And don't forget to hit that like button if you'll never look at a fuel pump the same way again.